Speed has never killed anyone. Suddenly becoming stationary. That's what gets you. Okay. Hot take, but he's right. Speed has never killed anyone. Nowadays, we travel at 70 miles per hour on the regular. Some of us travel up to 600 miles per hour for business trips or for vacation. And a select few have traveled at over 24,000 miles per hour. Speed is only dangerous when there is a large risk of a very sudden change in speed. Think from 60 miles per hour to zero. Which brings me to this. This is Highway 69. Nice, which runs through my hometown of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Well, technically the small neighboring city of Northport, but you get the idea. To the unknowledgeable person, it looks like your average multi-lane road running through your average American city. However, to any urban planner who understands good city design, this looks like a mistake. Why is this road a mistake? Because this road ignores the ironic rule of safe road design. In order to make a road safe, you must first make it more dangerous, for drivers specifically. I hope that statement will make sense by the end of this video. Hello people of the internet, I'm Nico, a German very critical of American road design, and in this video I want to explain why speed limit signs are effectively useless if you design your roads properly. Driving is a weird activity. It's one of the very few regular activities we do that happens at a higher speed than humans have evolved to deal with. Over the thousands and thousands of years that mankind has existed, we only recently started moving at speeds higher than we are physically capable of. It's because of our evolution that weird things start to happen when processing visual information at these higher speeds. Watch this video. This is what you think you see, but your brain is actually taking huge shortcuts to process this information, so what you actually see looks more like this. Yes, it's very sporadic and the brain is doing a lot of work to fill in the gaps that you didn't see. In order to maintain a clear vision of the world around us, our eyes need to refresh what we see some two to four times a second with something called saccadic eye movements. Rather than seeing everything with one clear wide angle shot, our eyes work more like the panorama mode on your phone where a bunch of pictures get stitched together. What happens at higher speeds though is that the eye movements trend more to the center of your vision. So while the stitched together image in your brain may look something like this, the faster you go, the less you actually see. This is obviously problematic for the safety of pedestrians, cyclists, or even motorcycle riders, not to mention the fact that braking distances greatly increase with higher speeds. So clearly, lower speeds are far safer for everyone, for those inside and especially for those outside of a car. And given the fact that America has over 7,000 pedestrian deaths per year, we need to go to a different country that is actually effective at slowing cars down to see how they do it. If you recognize this song, then you too are probably tired of seeing Max Verstappen winning all the time. Welcome to the Netherlands. Originally added to the world in 2010 in the Alpha 1.2.0 update, the Netherlands has transformed from a dimension in Minecraft to a cyclist paradise where kids can eat chocolate sprinkles for breakfast, which is probably why they are the happiest children on earth. Joking aside, while the Netherlands is not actually the hellish dimension from Minecraft, it is the urban planning envy of the world, and for that reason we need to take a look at how they design roads there, specifically how they use road design to kind of subconsciously enforce speed limits. First the basics. Here is a road, and here is a street. The difference between the two is not just the name, though that is a key distinction, but that one is a high-speed thoroughfare, while the other is a destination housing shops, restaurants, or even homes. The Netherlands does a good job distinguishing between the two, and the Dutch have many ways to signal the start of each. It can be something simple, like changing road materials from a cobbled street to a paved road, but the changes can also be more drastic, a speed bump, a width restriction, sometimes even both in one. With each type, either road or street, the Dutch also do a good job of managing the speed throughout the length of the road or street. Take this street for example. For one thing, it's just very narrow, especially compared with American streets. A two-lane street in a residential American neighborhood is usually wide enough for pickup trucks to park on either side and still have enough room for emergency services to get through. But this, also a two-lane street, is roughly half the width of a comparable American street. 
Then there is the material used for the road. Rather than smooth asphalt, which produces relatively little noise, the designers of this street chose brick, which, with its gaps, will produce more noise and vibration, giving the sensation of driving faster without actually going faster. Outside of the neighborhoods on high-speed roads, there are other ways to help regulate the speed. Take a look here. This road has painted bicycle lanes, which, while giving a designated space for cyclists, also helps make the road appear narrower, which makes for a higher perceived speed. Other elements include trees alongside the roadway, which also helps visually narrow the road. So why don't we see this in America? The truth is we do, we just don't see enough of it. Take this street in Tuscaloosa as an example. This is actually a pretty good example of safe street design. The lane is relatively narrow and the side of the road is lined with trees that visually narrow the road. The trees also provide some much needed shade, which is obviously another benefit. But just a few blocks over, there is this monstrosity of a street road combo with a speed limit of 30 miles per hour, but with lanes wide enough to realistically accommodate up to 40 miles per hour. This speed is problematic for multiple reasons. For one thing, this is one of the most walked places in the city of Tuscaloosa. There are a number of different restaurants and businesses, and on top of that, the parking spaces are arranged so that you have to reverse out into traffic, oftentimes blind to the cars coming down the road. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that a crash involving someone doing 40 miles per hour with someone reversing out into traffic would be catastrophic. With that difference in speed, the damage to both the vehicles and the occupants would be significant, and far worse if it were between a car and a pedestrian. As vehicle speed increases, so does the risk of fatality for any pedestrian hit. Data varies, but the point where speed makes a serious impact is between 30 and 40 kilometers per hour, about 19 to 25 miles per hour. That's why residential neighborhoods usually have speed limits of at most 25. But when roads are designed in such a way that going over the speed limit does not feel risky to the driver, then this poses a great risk to anybody outside of a car. Not only because of the impact speed and increased risk of fatality, but also because the driver may fail to spot the person altogether. For that reason, it is absolutely crucial that city streets have traffic calming measures to keep vehicle speeds down in the areas where pedestrians are common. 7,000 pedestrian deaths per year is 7,000 too many and is a direct result of inappropriate vehicle speeds in areas where people commonly walk or cycle. And while speed limit signs do have a small impact on average vehicle speeds and are better than doing nothing, in order to see a meaningful change in average vehicle speeds, the roads need to be designed in such a way that drivers feel unsafe driving at these higher speeds. Only by doing this will braking distances decrease enough and driver's view of the world be sufficient to react in time to avoid any collisions. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like this where I explain how the automotive industry affects our lives and vice versa, then hit the subscribe button. It's free and it helps me out more than you might think. If you really enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel and help make these videos possible in the future, I do have a Patreon page where for like three bucks a month, you can watch these videos ad free plus a few extra bonuses. Until next time, people of the internet, peace out.